counterterrorism expert Peter Vinson. He's a former official with the U.S. Department of Justice and Homeland Security. Peter, I was going to first ask you, uh, how were they able to get to him so quickly? But somebody told me the right question is, what took them so long? So which is it? Roy, despite some of the political divisiveness and separation in our country, thankfully, the United States law enforcement community has been incredibly well integrated. And the Joint Terrorism Task Force, working out of the Southern District of New York, based in Manhattan, pulled together elements of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the U.S. Um, uh, Marshal Service, U.S. Secret Service, as well as state and local police to take a whole of government approach to this extraordinarily dangerous threat that we saw. And so the government was able to bring the full weight of its various investigative authorities and also was able to leverage various digital platforms to ultimately track this individual down. It did take a number of days, but that's because the government wanted to make sure that it was I had identified the correct individual and had the charges in place in this federal criminal complaint to, exer to exercise its authority to arrest and then to search the premises, including this white van that we've heard so much about. The attorney general suggested that Sayok could spend decades uh, behind bars. How likely is that? It's extraordinarily likely. I have no doubt, having worked with the prosecutors in the Southern District of New York there in Manhattan, that they have a considerable amount of evidence already. And I expect there to be additional charges once the investigation is concluded and once this individual is taken to Manhattan, New York, there will be a grand jury impaneled and we will see additional charges, Roey, including, I would expect, some sort of domestic terrorism charge. We know that Sayok was a, a fan of the current president. He attended a lot of Trump rallies. We saw pictures of him there. He appears to have been either motivated or found reaffirmation by some of Trump's rhetoric. Uh, what do you think authorities will do with that information? Are they going to look for people that he associated with at those rallies or perhaps people who chatted with him online about that rhetoric? Absolutely. There are three real main concerns right now for law enforcement across the United States associated with this case. Are there additional improvised explosive devices, those in addition to the 13 that have already been located that are in mail rooms or processing centers somewhere. Was this individual working with others, co-conspirators? Was he receiving assistance from individuals on how to make these small pipe bombs? And in addition, what sort of copycats may be out there, inspired or motivated by the degree of attention that this case has gotten, individuals that are emotionally weak or psychologically susceptible to being inspired by radical thought. So I think authorities will focus very much on those three concerns. And as you say, Roy, they will look to see if there are any other potential co-conspirators, and certainly anyone that was in contact with this individual at political rallies, if he was in chat groups, they will look at to see what sort of internet, uh, digital, uh, uh, prints he has out there to try to uh, see who his associates may be, or if he was truly a lone wolf, a term that I don't like, I prefer to call them lone rats, and, and operating solely on his own. You mentioned possible copycats there. Uh, some have made the argument that the current climate of divisiveness in this country is leading to violence or threats of violence. Uh, do you think that we could expect more things like this? I worry a great deal, and I know my uh, colleagues and counterparts in both the law enforcement and intelligence gathering community are equally as worried. We've seen copycat type crimes before in the anthrax scare of a number of years ago, when the individual who was the perpetrator of those very, very dangerous attacks using powdered anthrax uh, was arrested, ultimately incarcerated, and convicted. We saw a number of individuals who followed that malevolent lead and also sent out and for years sent out uh, envelopes containing powder substance that appeared, in some cases, to look like anthrax. All right, Peter Vincent, thank you so much for joining us.